Hey folks, Mel the Train Shooter back in the studio and back with another Terrain Lab for you. And in this Terrain Lab we're going to be looking at this stuff. Now this is isopropanol or isopropyl alcohol. I'm struggling with that one guys. And it's been doing the rounds. Now I tried this stuff a few years ago and I didn't get good results with it. It messed with my paint and it messed with my glue and I pretty much dismissed it. But it's doing the rounds again on the Terrainiacs group. And I know that Luke APS really likes it. And I know that Luke Towin from Boulder Creek Railroad, Railroad really likes it. And both those guys are really good modelers. So it's time to have a re-look at it. But why are we looking at it? What's its purpose? Well, when you, when you do the research and you look into it, people are sort of saying there's, there's three major factors in using this when doing your sealing work. And that's specifically what we're interested in, using it to seal our, our flock and our foliage and all that sort of stuff. So they're saying three things. Now, the first one they're saying is it increases drying time. It reduces drying times because it evaporates. No argument under that, it's alcohol, it will evaporate faster than water, so not even gonna look at that, that's just, I'm gonna accept that as a given, yeah. Right, next one is that, it, how, it's actually, a, this stuff is actually a solvent for PVA, yeah, so the idea is that by mixing this in with your, with your liquid, you can break it down, make it more from a, a suspension to a solution, yeah, and therefore get ben better penetration and better sealing. Now, I'm not 100% sold on that because from my experience, water, yeah, PVA dissolves in water as well. Yeah, now there may be some chemists out there who can tell me whether, uh, whether PVA in water is a suspension or a solution. Yeah, I'd like to know. But from my experience, yeah, it's a solution. It mixes and it works fine. So I'm not 100% sure where the benefit of this is. But it is a solvent for PVA, so it's worth looking at to see if we get better penetration. Now, the other thing that, that a lot of people seem to really bleat on about is it reduces the water tension, okay? And by reducing the water tension, it allows the water to flow into all those spaces which it might not normally flow into. Now, this is not, nothing new to us war gamers and us model makers, okay? Using things that reduce what you water tension is quite common. Me personally, yeah, I use this stuff, which is uh, Winsor Newton acrylic, uh, what shall it, flow improver. And that drops the, what shall it, the, the sort of water tension down drastically. But there are cheaper options. So you could go with some basic dish detergent. That does the same. Essentially, anything that makes bubbles in water will reduce the surface tension. That's how you get bubbles, <laughs> okay? But the question is, all right, well, I know this does. I know this does. I've heard this does, but how do they compare? Is it a matter of we are really missing a trick with this stuff and it is the wonder stuff? Is the difference that slight that it doesn't really justify the money for the purchase? Or is it a case that these products will do quite fine and this is just a bit of posh modeling? Well, we won't know until we've done our tests, will we? So that's the first thing. Now, with that in mind, it's time to crack on with our first test, which is a basic look at water tension. So we're gonna come down to the, the desk for some nice close-ups and let's go through some simple tests, eh? So in a first test, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the actual surface tension of these various fluids. And I've got four set up. I've got bog standard water. I've got water with uh, my flow improver in it. We've got water with a drop of dish detergent in it. And then we've got neat alcohol. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a couple of drops on each of these bits of black card. Yeah, and we will see how the bubbles form. Okay, so. Let's start off with water, and if I drop water on there, you can see it is a nice solid bubble. Yeah, it's got a sharp edge on it, it's raised up a couple of mils, probably about three or four. Yeah, so that's what water looks like without any flow improver in it. Now, if we go over to our Winsor Newton flow improver and we drop that down, now immediately you can see. Yeah, that, that is far flatter, much flatter, okay? In fact, let me drop this camera just a little, guys. 
there you go you can see it much better now and you can see that's a lot flatter it's spread out a lot more and that's what flow improver does it reduces the water tension and allows the water to flow into places that typically the normal water tension wouldn't allow it so if we move on and we use our bit of dish detergent yeah, and we drop that down now the dish detergent it's flowing slightly better but it is nowhere near as good as the flow aid yeah, it's better than just bog standard water, but, oh, and they've mixed. <laughs> yeah, it was going to happen. But as you can see, before they mixed, yeah, the dish detergent, it was an improvement, but not as good as Flow 8. So if we go for our, what you call it, our alcohol next, and this is the acid test, or the alcohol test, as we say. Yeah, how does that do? Now that, once again, it's flowing well. It does seem to be an improvement on the flow aid. So let's just put some more flow aid on there. Uh, just so we can test that out. Personally, I'd say it's, it, it's an equal match, to be truthful. I mean, that has it flowed far further. So yeah, it is a little bit better. It is evaporating already. So there is an improvement with the flow aid with, with using the alcohol in the mix, yeah, as neat al alcohol, yeah. It is slightly better than with a flow improver. So, definitely worth looking at more. Now the next thing I need to do is set up the next set of experiments, which is going to be looking at different ratios of this alcohol cum water mix and see what that does to the flow. So we saw in the last test that uh, the alcohol definitely has a lower surface tension, yeah? Far lower, it spreads a lot better, but that's in its raw form, and we can't pour its raw form on our terrain because it's gonna melt our paint. It's a solvent at the end of the day. It's what we use for cleaning paint off brushes and that sort of stuff. So we need to have a look at what it does when it's diluted and whether it still has those surface tension reducing properties. So with that in mind, I've set up this little test. Now, what we're looking at here is we've got raw alcohol, we've got three parts alcohol, one part water, we've got one part water, one part alcohol, we've got three parts water, one part alcohol, and then we've just got a 5% mix of alcohol. Yeah, so basically a taint, a, a tint, a taint. I'm not really sure. So if we, I'm only going to put a couple of drops down because we know this stuff bleeds into it, itself. So if we go for the raw, yeah, spreads really nice, really easy. Yeah, clean that out. Go for the all right. If we go for the seventy-five percent, yeah, doesn't it is still spreading out, but it is a lot taller than the last one. So the water hit is having an effect. Okay, and reducing that surface tension. So let's go for fifty. Yeah, once again, yeah, it's a, it is flowing better, yeah, but we do have, it is still holding up a reasonable amount. Right, let's go for this one. 25%. Yeah, flowing slightly better again. Yeah, there's still a better flow on it, but it is actually still higher than this one. Okay, if you look at it very carefully, it's got more of a ridge line to it. So let's go for the 5% taint. And at 5%, just a little bit, it's acting pretty much like water. Okay, so obviously 100% is brilliant. Yeah, and it's already evaporated off just then. Yeah, but we know we can't put that on our terrain. So we're looking in this region and 50% seems to be the point, but very quickly, yeah, where's my flow aid? Da -da 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 -da. Let me find my flow aid, guys. Just give me a second. Right, so for my flow aid, this is already pre-mixed with water. So I should be able to just put a couple of drops down. I'd say the flow aid sits between the 50 and the 25%, to be perfectly honest, with regards to its flow. Obviously, it's, it's mixed in there. Yeah, but from experience, and if we just go for some bog standard water. Look at that for a bubble. <laughs> yeah. Get a bit of flow egg in it. There you go. 
So yes, it definitely does improve the water tension, or reduce the water tension, should I say, and increase the flow of it. Now, I 5%, a little touch of it doesn't seem to do much. You seem to need to be in the 25 to, to, to 50 mark, yeah, to get any real improvements from it. Now, the concern is, with that sort of level, is it going to affect our glues, is it going to affect our paints, and that sort of stuff. It should be pointed out that the flow aid is coming it's easily in the 50%, 25% mark as well, okay? So, I'm not 100% sold on this yet, but what we really need to do is have a look at it at some terrain, yeah? So, my next job is I need to knock together some test boards, and then we'll come back once I've got my test boards together and have another look, yeah? Right, cracking on time. So we've looked at the general sort of effect of alcohol mixed with water and looked at its sort of effect on that water as a flow aid, yeah? And we've seen results that tend to suggest that the alcohol is a better flow aid than our actual flow aid. Not massively, but definite improvement. But that's just on a, a plain bit of card. Let's have a look on some trade. So what I've got is, I've come up with this. It's a testing panel. Now this is one of a couple of testing panels, but this is our first. And it's sectioned off, and obviously you have to put some grit down, I've put a mixture of fine and coarse turf, yeah, and then I've hot glued some various clump polish down. And if I very quickly do that, yeah, you can see it's all pretty much stuck down. We're, we're losing the odd crumb, but nothing special. Now what I've got here, okay, is I have a four part mix of, shall we call it liquid, and then one part PVA. Now in this case, it's the liquid is water. In this case, it's water with flow aid. In this case, it's one part water, seven, uh, three parts alcohol, so 75% mix, one part water, one part alcohol, 50% uh, mix, three parts water, one part alcohol, 25% mix. So this is the typical one to five is a good ratio for mixing up a sealing coat. Now what I did notice was, even though that, what you got, the alcohol is supposed to be a solvent, okay, for the glue, it mixes better with the water, to be perfectly honest. The best one it mixes with is the flow aid and water. And if I bring it up, yeah, same amount of PVA, yeah, this one's in, in flow aid with water, okay? This one's in the 75 mix, and this one is almost like a syrup, okay? Massive difference. Even the 25 percenter, okay, so that's, I can't mix these up, but even the 25 percenter hasn't mixed as well as the watch color, as the water and flow aid, or so it seems. But the real test is putting them onto the actual sheets and see how well they stick. Now, at the minute, this is all stuck pretty well, so we should expect this to firm it up. Now, typically when you're doing this sort of stuff, you'll do wet working, which is apply water, yeah, and then drop your PVA into it so it flows. I'm gonna drop it straight onto the sheet because quite typically when I'm sealing, I go straight onto dry. And I just wanna see how the alcohol affects that. Now, we're gonna start off and we're gonna get ourselves a syringe full of our watered down solution. Yeah. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop it onto here, here, and into those. So now what I'm expecting is as I do this, is with it being just water, it's not really gonna do much. In fact, it's just gonna sit on top as blobs because it's got no flow aid in. Yeah, which is what we'd expect. And then if I just come along and I just, Try and get some in there. It's not going to go because the, the tension's too high in the water. There's no flow aid in it whatsoever. Okay, and that is, that horrendous thing is perfectly acceptable. Okay, because that's what we expected it to do. Next, we're going to go on and work with the flow aid. Yeah, so let's suck all this up. Yeah, and if we come along, the flow aid is spreading it out. As you can see, it's running through the grit and soaking it up quite well through the coarse turf. Struggling a bit on the coarse turf. 
and enter the clump file edge. Now it is soaking into the clump foliage where it wasn't before. Okay. And we've got a little bit left, so. Now it has dropped down and it starts spreading around here, so we're looking good. It's gone really well with the grit. Yeah, so much better spread with that. Yeah, my floor will do. Right, onto the 75% mix. Yeah, now this is more like a gel, so I'm quite interested. In fact, it has literally gone like a gel there. So let's have a look what this does. Yeah, it's quite thick. It's thicker than the Flow Aid one, and it's not flowing as well. And you can smell the alcohol on it. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put a pass straight down the middle to see how far it will flow out. So in the case of the flow aid in the grit, it's flown all the way out. In the case of the coarse foliage, it has flown all the way out and has soaked into the, the clump. Yeah, so if we come down here and put some in these, this is really is like a gel. Yeah. So we'll have to see what this does to it. And then the last bits, just put it down here. Yeah, right. Mm. The gel nature of the 75% mix, yeah, it's not flowing at all. It's just sitting. Okay, so if we go to the 50% mix, yeah, you can smell the alcohol on this one. We've got a better flow with this one. It is creeping a lot better. Uh, we'll have to see how it goes compared to the flow aid. So we'll put strip down there. It's still quite jelly. Quite jelly. And then into that clump there. Now technically this should dry quicker because it's, what you call it? So, yeah, the gel started to flow out a bit there. That is flowing all right, and we've it's flown over the grit a lot better there. Yeah, right, last one. Our 25% mix. Now, technically, this should flow really well. And it is. Very well. Uh, even with half of it bloody missing off the... <laughs> Right, so we'll put the strip down there, let's put some in here. Now remember this isn't, this is going on sort of, what's the term I'm looking for? Right, put some more on there. There we go. Right, with the 25% mix, that's flowed out over the grit really well. Not sure on this yet, We'll have to see how it soaks. But overall, Flow Aid's looking good, guys. In all honesty, uh, the Flow Aid is better than the 75% mix. It's better than the 50% mix. And looking on the clump foliage and that sort of stuff, it's looking like it's better than the 25% mix, to be perfectly honest. Now that's going on to a dry piece, yeah? So what we need to do now is we need to leave this to dry, then come back and have a look how well things have spread, how well they've stuck. So I'll do that in a second, eh? Right, a quick interim, okay, as this is drying. Right, with the water, it is sitting well on top. You can see the whiteness of the PVA on there. Same with the clump foliage. It has sort of soaked out, but it's got some clear defined lines there. I'm not gonna mess with my clump foliage until that's completely dry so we can assess it. Moving on to the Flow Aid. Now the Flow Aid, uh, it's already pretty much on the way to drying, yeah? With the flowing into the clump, it has pretty much spread itself to the very edges. Yeah, now moving on to 75%, now that's dry, yeah, and that's evaporated off, so we've got no excessive moisture on that anymore. There's a little bit on the 50% and the 25% is, is probably wetter and, what you call it, 
wetter for the grit and the clump than the flow aid. Now right now, flow aid's still looking pretty damn good. Okay, yeah, 75, 50% has dried off quicker. Yeah. But with regards to the spread and the actual, you know, carrying the, the glues across your surface, flow aid's looking best. But we'll see what, what, what's looking, you know, how it looks when it's all dry, guys. So, let's have a look at this sealing test. Now, uh, straight off, water, flow aid, 75, 50, 25 percent. Now, if we go through the grit first, okay, on the water, now this was with no flow aid, it's flown all through it and it's stuck it all down pretty well, to be truthful. Yeah, now, if we go to the flow aid, which we knew, yeah, that's really well stuck. I'm going to lose skin before I lose grit on that. Yeah, over to the 75%, which was a bit excessive. Tough, 50%, tough as well, 25%. Perhaps a little bit less than flow aid. Once again, flow aid's coming in roughly between that 25 and 50% mark. The 50%, maybe a touch, touch stiffer. Okay, all right then, right, our flock. Okay, now we gave this a good saturation. Yeah, if I give it a good rub, it's on a flat surface so it will come off, I know it will. Yeah, over to this. Yeah, the flow aid is pretty well stuck, but if I give it a rub, it will come off. It's on a flat surface, that's why we use the flat surface, because it's the least sticky. If it was textured, it'd grip in between all the bits and the bobbles. Okay, but that's pretty tough. Yeah, over to the watch you call it, to the 75%, that's definitely tougher. Yeah, over to 50. Yeah, bit tougher than the flow aid. And over to the 25. Yeah, that's less than the flow aid in all honesty. Yeah, some of it is sticking down a little bit better, but generally, hmm. So it's sitting in between the, these marks. Right, the clump polish. Now this is one that Luke sort of for APS really raves about why he uses the alcohol stuff when I was chatting with him. Yeah, so the water, yeah, it's crispy on the edges, but it's still pretty soft. Yeah, now my Jarvis clump polish is tough as hell, but it's why I use the Jarvis one. Yeah, it's good sturdy stuff. Moving on to the flow aid, now that's a lot stiffer. He says, yeah, that's a lot stiffer as well as I was expected. That's pretty hard at 75%. Yeah. Softer again, 50, 25%. Mm, pretty soft. It's, it's bang in between this, this 25 and sort of 50% mark the, compared to the flow aid. The water definitely on the clump foliage isn't as good. Yeah, uh, normally when I do clump foliage, I do go into it and I inject PVA straight into it. So, I mean, yeah, I can see the alcohol working a bit to sort of help carry that through in that case. Yeah. But mm. So, what do we think, guys? Hmm. Right, in all honesty, as a sealing coat that I'm spray as I'm applying, yeah, I'm still with the flow aid. The one thing that sort of gets to me is that with the way it gelled up when we mix the alcohol directly with the PVA. Now, if you mix alcohol with PVA, you get PVA. <sighs> okay, but it's a different sort of PVA. You see, the PVA that we normally use is PVAC. Yeah, polyvinyl acetate. If you mix alcohol with PVAC, you get PVA, which is polyvinyl alcohol. Now, polyvinyl alcohol is something that's used in the screen printing industry. And I've had a chat with the guys downstairs, yeah, because we've got screen, screen printers in this building. And it's quite toxic, nasty stuff. Yeah, so much so that when they were sort of describing and showing how they handle it and what they do and what the, the protective gear they wear when they're using it, the idea of mixing alcohol directly with the PVA does not appeal to Mel. To Mel. 
Mel is smart enough to know that he's not smart enough to be messing around with this stuff really in this studio and this setup. I've got no extractors, anything like that. It can be quite toxic stuff, okay? With regards to results, yeah, alcohol is a definite improvement on what you call it than just water, but yeah, at the 25-50% the, the mark, yeah, it's coming in roughly the same as our flow aid. We're getting the same sort of effects. I'm not seeing a massive improvement. We are seeing a slight sort of extra penetration in the clump foliage, okay? I could address that by what I normally do, which is just going along with a syringe and any large areas of clump, just give them a little blast straight in, into them. So, not completely sold on it. There is a difference, yeah, whether that difference is worth it, I'm not sure, but we will only know with a bit more testing. So, shall we move on? So, next test, the wet water technique. So, if we come down to the bench, yeah, I've got another one of my testing strips set up, okay? Yeah, the idea is that we're going to pre-wet this with our various solutions without any PVA in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hit it with my bog standard PVA spray. Okay, and we're just going to give it a broad coat and see how well it carries it across the board and that sort of stuff. So, that's the job. Okay. Yeah, now, there's no flow aid in there. It's just water and PVA. Yeah, so it's just dilute PVA, which is what we'd expect. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're going to apply our various, yeah, water, flow aid, 75% mix, 50% mix, 25% mix. And it should flow a lot better than the previous test because we've not got PVA mixed into it, which is, I think, what gelled it up round about the 75, 50 mark. Okay, so we'll load up with water. Yeah, and we'll just drop it on. And as we were expecting, it's sitting right on the top. Yeah, it's not flowing anywhere, which is exactly what we expect from water because of the surface tension. Look at those little bubbles all over it. That should be interesting when it comes to spraying some watch glue onto it, spraying some sealer on onto it. Yeah, now there's easily enough water on there to cover a lot, but the surface tension has kept it all clumped up. So if we go for our flow aid, yeah, we should get a much, oh, beautiful flow there. Oh, look at that, that's, is this gonna saturate all of this before we even use all of it? Okay, yeah, it's flowing through there really well. I'm sort of trying to put it right on top of the club foliage so we can see what got, gets absorbed. And in the mainstay, most of it has. Yeah, a bit more on there. On the grit, it's just flown all the way through it. And to be truthful, on the clump foliage as well. On the, on the coarse foliage. So yeah, that's fine. Yeah, let's go for 75%. Now, technically, we should get a brilliant spread with this, but I'm not sure if the amount of alcohol, yeah, is going to slow that down, it's going to retard it. So no, no, we're getting a good spread. For how much it is, yeah, definitely on par with the, with the flow aid. Definitely better with the clump foliage at the 75%. That's flowing a lot better than the, the what you call it, is it? Soak through rather nice. Yeah, through these. It's going into the clumps better than the flow aid did. The flow aid sort of bubbled up, but it's soaked it in now, so we will see. Yeah. So overall, 75%? Not bad, not bad at all. Right, let's go for 50-50. Yeah, so along the there. Yeah, soaking spreading really well. Yeah, into the clump. Uh, run out. <laughs> yeah, plenty on there though. And then finally, 
the 25%. Yeah. Flowing really well. That flows really well, that does. Put some on there. Is it struggling with, no, no, it's, it's heading itself out. There's plenty here. So that's all those on. Right, let's move these out of the way. Quick analysis right now, yeah? Water acted exactly how we expected. It has soaked through, but it's got that edge to it. It doesn't seem to flow, and we it's got no flow aid in. The stuff with the flow aid, it has soaked into everything. It has flown everywhere. It's a lot thicker as water, okay? And I know that sounds a bit strange, but if you compare it to the others, uh, they've evaporated off a lot quicker, or they've settled and they haven't pooled. Across the board, 75%, 50%, and 25% all soaked in really well. But pretty much same as the flow aid, but synced in a little bit more. But here's the, the, the proper test, isn't it? So let's give them a blast. A little bit concerned, yeah, because I'm not sure if the alcohol has reactivated the PVA there and loosened that because I didn't have that spreading when I was spraying it with the flow aid and the water. But over here, it's sort of, as I'm hitting it, yeah, it's become loose. Now, I do know water reactivates PVA, but it normally takes a little while. Yeah, but that seems to have really hit it up quite quickly. Okay, let's give it one last blast. No, yeah. Right, that's a damn good soaking. A damn good soaking. So what we need to do now is have a look at the results once they're dry. So a quick interim update on the pre-wet and seal. Okay, now obviously the water is just everywhere. We flooded it, we expected it. I mean, it is starting to dry. Yeah, it will carry all the way through, so it will seal, yeah, just as any other terrain would. Okay, the flow aid, really nice. Okay, the grit has pretty much flown out and is well on the way to drying. We've got a lovely good coverage, yeah, when it comes down to the clump, to the, to the, to the actual scatter. Yeah, moving on to 75%, that's still got some wet bits on the edges. Yeah, but it's looking rather good. It is still wet. Yeah, and moisture increases as alcohol volume drops down. So this is wetter than the flow aid, the 25%. Yeah, the 50%, about 50-50, to be truthful, between those two. So like I say, once again, the clump foliage, I'm not going to mess with till it's dry. But overall, interim results is flow aid's looking good. Flow aid's looking really good, guys. Hmm. We'll see when it's dry, eh? Right, time to have a look at our pre-wet results. So, if we come down to the table. Yeah, now, first off, this was very wet. And as you can see, we've got lots of uh, colour bleed, yeah, from the Jarvis flock, which is one of the reasons I like it. Yeah, it's not an issue with it. It's what it's supposed to do. But the interesting thing is, yeah, as you've gone along, once you've got down to the 25%, the colour bleed's reduced. Okay, now, the colour bleed... Could be a matter of flow, it could be a matter of flow aid, uh, could be a matter of how long the water is there. So, in the case of this one, the 25%, okay, although it evaporated off, the, the 25% would have caused less of water tension, so it would have not flowed as far, okay. In the case of these, they've taken longer perhaps, mm. Yeah, and hence why the water's gone. But let's have a look at the actual results. So, pre-wet with water, yeah, no alcohol or flow aid involved. Yeah, that's going to hurt me, Tom. Yeah, with the flow aid. Yeah, that's hard as nails. 
Okay, 75% is hard as nails. 50% is hard as nails. 25% is hard as nails. Yeah, there's a definite improvement in using, what you call it? Uh, there's a definite improvement in using the pre-wet technique, but that applies to the flow aid and the, what you call it? And the, the alcohol, yeah? Okay, when it comes to the grit, across the board, all solid. Right, corn foliage next. So, pre-wet with the water. Yeah, oh, come and look at that. Coming off left, right and centre. Yeah, as I said, it is on a smooth board, so that will factor into that. So, moving on to the flow aid. That's quite stuck. I mean, the larger clumps I can force off. Yeah, but the smaller bits, that's stuck quite well. Okay, moving on to 75%. Yeah. Same margin probably as the flow aid. On to the 50%. Yeah, it's coming off. 25%. Much the same. In fact, that's probably a bit worse than the flow aid because the flow aid isn't actually getting down to the actual board. Yeah, so in this case with the pre-wet, you're looking at flow aid is sitting roughly yeah, I'd say it's sitting in the 70% 70, 70%. I mean it is tough, just feel tough, but yeah, it has helped it soak through it, it just hasn't helped it adhere. Okay, and that may say, sound a bit strange, but yeah, if the adherence is the same, then if it doesn't soak through it as well, then that won't hold as well. So yeah, okay, 75% there's an improvement. Yeah, and possibly at the lower ratios as well where the clumps are. But it is comparable with, with Flow Aid. Okay, all right, what about the clump foliage? So with the water, yeah, soft, yeah. Bit stiffer with the, what you call it, with the, the Flow Aid. Quite firm with the 75%. Not solid. Yeah. 50%, nothing special. 25%, pretty much close to water. Right. Flow aid's coming in around about the 75% mark, guys. Yeah. Now, what I'm noticing here is there's a. We look at the higher quantities to get the map to get what the benefits from it. You know, we're looking at sort of the 25 to 50, the 50 to 75 mark in the pre-wet situation, which makes sense because there's extra water on it. You've got the water from the pre-wet and then you've got the water from the actual water down PVA. Yeah, whereas before we just mixed them all together. Yeah, so that sort of makes sense. Yeah, but grit wise, really solid. On a textured surface, it would be really solid, I have no doubt about that. I use a flat surface because I know I, I get a better idea of how well it's stuck, okay? But at those sort of high quantities of alcohol in the mix, the question then becomes, well, is that gonna do anything to the stuff that we use, such as paint, PVA, varnish, and all that sort of stuff? So I think we need to have a look at that next. So, should we crack on? Now, alcohol is pretty, caustic stuff especially to pva and paint and stuff like this it's a solvent and one of my concerns with when i you know i started this sort of terrain lab was what sort of strength does it start messing up you know my base coats and my varnishes and stuff like that okay and so this is a little test to work that out if we come back down to the desk what we've got is we've got another one of my testing strips now this is spray paint, yeah, uh, acrylic army paint of Dark Angels Green, or Dark Angel Green, uh, or Angel Green, it's just a very dark green, yeah. After that, yeah, we've got a nice thick coat of PVA, now you can see in that dark stripe there, yeah. Then we've got some acrylic paint, some house paint, and then here what we've got is we've got some spray varnish. Now, quick sort of heads up, you will see a light, a little bit of whitening there and a little bit of whitening there. I sprayed it outside and so we had a little bit of moisture and a little bit of frosting, so need to factor that in. Now I'm gonna start, yeah, I've got four solutions, 100%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%
sorry, 100%, 75%, 50%, 25%. <laughs> Sounds like a hell of a bar, doesn't it? <sighs> and so I'm gonna start with the 25% because I'm not sure if I dip this brush into my 100%, I'm really gonna melt it. So all I'm gonna do is get this and just apply a good coat on. I don't know if I'm gonna use it or we will see, yeah? But I just wanna get a good coat on. It's not melting the brush so far. I'm not seeing any major reactions. Let's get a good amount on. I'll just say it's all, all soaked across the board. And scrape off the excess. So we've got it on there. Right, can't see any reaction as of yet, but this is going to be a time thing. So let's quickly skip. Oh, I've got it on my finger. I don't want to do that. It's nasty stuff. I should be wearing gloves. Yeah, let's get it on there. Now the 100% should definitely do something. I would expect it to, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's roughly about the same amount. On to the 75%. Yeah, and then finally, the 100%. Now this should do something to it. I would expect it to, with it being 100% alcohol and it being a solvent. But we're not going to know until we actually get it on. There we are. Right, there we have it. Looking at it, I can't see any of effect as of yet, okay? Yeah, obviously, the, the higher the concentrate, the quicker it's drying, it's evaporating off, that makes sense. Okay, but I can't see anything as of yet. So, I'll take a photo and then we'll have a look at it when it's all evaporated off and it's all dry and then we can make our minds up then. So, see you in a sec. So it's all dry now. Let's go down and have a look at the results. Okay, so here we have our, our panel. And straight away, you can see it has affected it. Okay, you can see across here, there, 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 across there. Okay, now looking at it, I've, I've got sort of weird results. Okay, and what I mean by this is that if you look at it, the worst damage to the actual materials is actually done with the lower ratios and all I can think about is this is with the the more concentrated it is the quicker it's evaporated off and the less time it's actually had to affect what it's been put on top of so if we actually have a look okay and we start off with this this isn't too bad yeah there's a little bit of light patch there Okay, but if we go across to 75%, you start to see more light patching, yeah, and it's affected the spray paint. Coming across here to 50%, yeah, we've got some there, and we go down to 25%, and it's quite significant. It has dissolved it, thinned it, I'm not sure what it's done to it, but it's really reduced the colour on that one. Now, yeah, all of these, these paints look lighter to me. Yeah, there seems to be a cut-off point there. Yeah, where the original paint is. So yeah, I do think it's affected the paint, but not drastically. The PVA seems absolutely fine, to be perfectly honest. But above all, this frosting, yeah? Look at the frosting on the 25%. I mean, that's pretty much white and cracked all the way along. A lot worse than it was when we had originally noted it. I can see frosting on this piece. I can see it on this piece. And I can see a patch on here as well. Now what this is telling me is, quite simply, I don't want this near anything that has been spray primed or anything yeah, that has been spray varnished. Now I don't know if the spray element is an element to it, I don't know to be sure, but you don't want to be using this to seal something with that, so you've perhaps used an MDF kit and you've used spray varnish on because it's going to frost it up. Yeah, now I already know that I don't have that problem with flow aid and you know, water and that sort of problem. So, yeah, 
not happy with those results to be truthful guys I mean if it's just you know there's no spray varnish on it and you know everything's been primed over and that sort of stuff then fine but if it isn't because we are having a bad time Mm. Let's wrap this up. Bit of a challenging one, this, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I came in off the back of prior experience being quite messy and not good results. To a lot of people saying, yeah, yeah, we use it in this, we use it in this. To the stage of, all right, let's get it tested. Now, now I've done these tests and... I might be missing a trick, I'm, you know, I might be using slightly strong stuff or slightly weaker stuff than other people. But generally, from what I can see, okay, you need pretty high quantities of the alcohol in a premix to get any benefits from it. But we've already seen that at those sort of ratios, yeah, that can affect uh, things like your spray varnish, it can affect your acrylics, it can affect your spray paints. Yeah, I don't particularly like those high quantities of uh, yeah on PVA because of the the polyvinyl alcohol thing and the toxicity toxicity of that. So to get the major benefits from it, yeah, above using you know the old flow aid, you've got to go into the sort of level where I don't really want to be messing around with, and then you've got to be start looking at volumes. Now, if you're using those sort of volumes, well. I've been using this little bottle of Flow Aid for three, four years now. It cost me about seven pound, and there's at least another year, maybe two years in it. And I add it to everything. Yeah, but I mean, this stuff you dilute down 20 times, and then you only have to add a little bit, like a taint, like, you know, two, three percent to your volume mix to get the effects. Yeah, this stuff you're having to, to add, like, you know, around about 50% mark before you start seeing any actual real improvement. Yeah, and at 50%, yeah, this, you know, it starts racking up. Now, I am not going to argue, there is better penetration into clump foliage, yeah, with the, what you call it, with the alcohol. No argument on that whatsoever. Yeah, I can, you, can, you can feel it. But that being said, is that really worth it when you could just get your PVA water solution mix in a syringe and then just quickly hit any clumps and just inject a bit in. Same result. Doesn't take that long to be perfectly honest. Uh, I don't know whether to be truthful I am being a little bit biased and a little bit set in my way because you know I like it basic. But looking at the actual results, you know, my grit has been stuck on without the need of flow aid. Yeah, and it's been stuck on really well. So why do I need alcohol to get it to stick better? Okay, if flow aid is working with my with my watch with my scatter and that sort of stuff, and this is on a completely flat surface, which it's rubbish at sticking at, yeah, then it tends to suggest that on normal terrain, and I know from experience on normal terrain because I've made plenty of normal terrain, it don't come off. Yeah, so why do I need the alcohol for that? Yeah, yes, it does reduce drying times, but I I found that at the lower quantities. Yeah, your drying times were pretty much the same as with the flow aid. And I think that's, now with the alcohol, it reduces the surface tension and it evaporates off. But you've got to remember the flow aid increases the surface area. So there's more room for evaporation of the water as well. Okay, so I'm going to be a bit controversial here. And no doubt the two looks will be in the comments to give me their, their opinions. Yes, alcohol does give better results yeah it does in all honesty i'm concerned about the quantities that you need to lay down okay to get those results i'm concerned about the overall long-term cost of using alcohol as a terrain builder yeah and so for me i think this stuff i'm not i'm not never going to use it because i've seen it's got some applications but for me, this is going to end up sitting on a shelf and being one of those rare coat, coats that, you know, if I need to get something done quick or I need to make absolutely sure something is stuck, you know, or firm or something like that, then I can revert to this. But I think it's a case of posh modelling, guys. The, the benefits you're getting from it for the cost you're paying for it, I don't see as justifiable generally when we're getting good results already with just water and pva without the flow aid and with a couple of little bit of flow aid and you know a little bit of extra care and attention 
yeah? You know, injecting into your clump foliage or any difficult to reach areas. Now, a lot of people say alcohol is great because it means that uh, as a pre-wet technique, you get your PVA everywhere it needs to go. Well, as a pre-wet technique, you soak it. Yeah, the water's already everywhere it needs to go. So that argument's sort of a little bit null and void. I mean, I'm, I'm trying, I'm doing my best here to sort of give the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, but when I'm looking at the actual results, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm sort of analysing, will I use it, would I use it? Okay, the res you, you yeah, get better results, but I'm getting those results with what I've got. Yeah, so my personal recommendation is, if you're a commission studio, something like that, then yeah, I would look into this sort of stuff, because you're making money off your terrain. Okay, uh, it's just a material cost that someone else is paying, and it would it will produce slightly better res re results, and there's a good chance it will reduce your drying times. Okay, it certainly won't extend them, and as long as you understand how it affects other materials and you're careful, then I think it will be a boon to you. I think if you are a hobbyist making war games terrain, you're making club terrain stuff like that. I think this just complicates an exp and adds ed added expense you don't need into the mix. You know what I mean? Yeah? Now, obviously, I haven't got massive amounts of experience of using this. This is just a couple of simple tests to get a handle on it. If I am missing a trick, folks, get it down in the comments. If there's anything else you'd like me to look at with this, remember, with these terrain labs, quite often we revisit them in about three to six months time based on your feedback and that sort of stuff and me playing with them further yeah so we may come back to this in the future so if you've got any experience of this or if you've got any questions about this get them in the comments guys obviously like it if you like it yeah share it if you know anyone will find it useful and as always if you're new here yeah click the subscribe button but most importantly if these videos are helping you with your hobby please consider subscribing in one of the supporting in one of those corners yeah it's only a dollar a month but it keeps the lights on the cameras rolling and me at this desk making videos for you and in the meantime guys i don't think this is going to be the end of it it's certainly not going to be the end of it in the comments i have a feeling but that's where we are right now so hope it helps your hobby guys crack on